it's very simply, I help people restore safety to their nervous systems. So that when people like talk the talk of from surviving to thriving, like forget about it. That's that's unrealistic. From early years in our life, right? We come into this world, we're born, okay? We're conceived and we're born. We don't get to choose whose arms we land in. And we don't get to choose like what state they're actually in and how well they can actually nurture us and nurture that sense of safety within our nervous systems from that very early age. And as babies, we determine life through our felt senses. Our cognitive mind isn't developed. We don't think like we think as adults. We feel, we sense, and we know how dependent we are on our caregivers. So what that brings into us is we kind of learn how to survive. We know we learn how to work towards having our needs met in ways that um, may not really serve us as we step into adulthood. And when we're unconscious of those, we can be unconsciously living life in survival all the time without even realizing it. Wow. I think when you take it back to newborn that eight pounds and six ounces and you say, okay, this is the big, this is your beginning. You're welcome to the world. But then what happens to you, Mm. what the nurturing and the everything that you experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We learn how to, to survive. We're wired for survival and self-preservation a hundred percent let's talk about the work uh, that you do with 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 the people you serve yeah with the guy like when when somebody comes to me and they start telling their story okay Mm -hmm. my job is to really listen and then from there it's to shine a little light on when you're telling this story, how is it feeling in your body? Okay, so is it increasing your heart rate? Can you feel your thoughts begin to race? Do you notice how things start bouncing all around the place? Do you feel grounded? Do you feel centered? Do you feel connected to this story? And where within you is that strongest connection? And then from there, we kind of gently weave them towards feeling grounded, feeling that centeredness in themselves. And then I begin to ask them, if you were to tell the story from this place, how differently would it be told? And it's this subtle awakening of how this conditioning It's like this invisible hand that molds our perceptions. It molds our our thoughts. It molds our energy. And it really molds the direction which we um, travel our lives through. And when we know that we can actually like change this direction with some sense of reconnecting with these felt senses, which are deeply connected with our very younger being, then we get to collect ourselves in a completely different way. Because as you said, and how you said, like the the angel and the saboteur, the job of the saboteur is really to prevent you from feeling the pain that you felt as a child. Right. Right, exactly. So when we can like kind of highlight the fact that it's really trying to protect you, it's coming in as this sense of protection, defense. So you've moved away from this ability to connect deeply with your authentic self. You've gone into complete defense mode. The barriers are going up. Those survival strategies are well in place and are active. And... So 
very slowly and gently, I begin to try and show them the vast ground between that angel and that saboteur. So that we can start walking ourselves back to that middle ground where we can meet ourselves with compassion, with understanding. And when we bring it in through the framework of the nervous system, it gives us something tangible for things that just sometimes just don't make sense. Why does this always happen? Why do I react this way? And for a lot of people, they get that sense that this is not appropriate for this time and place. Where are these thoughts coming from? What just happened to the ground that I felt beneath me? Where did it go all of a sudden? Right? Yeah. So they begin to be able to connect it to this innate, wonderful like piece of you know, engineering that's within us that has brought us this far. And then we get to that point of starting asking those questions. None of this is making sense. Why am I still stuck? Why are these patterns still here? I've tried talking about it. I've tried all of these things. And then I ask, have you turned towards your nervous system? Because these early core beliefs are very attached to our stress responses. And like, as you might even communicate with me, and like, there may be something that you say that maybe might trigger that early core belief. Say for me, I had this sense that I wasn't welcome. And you've made me feel very welcome here today. All right. But over the years, I've learned how very quickly that can come in. And how I can like maybe begin to get a little shaky. And so there's my flight response. I start looking for an escape. You know, sorry, I'm out of time. <laughs> I've got to go. <laughs> I gotta go. Right? It's over. <laughs> you I know, guess, because um, that's that's what the can like when we are in condition mode, that's how powerful it is. And then when we don't realize how, how much they drive our thoughts, our energy, our behaviors, our actions, then we are constantly um, letting it take the lead where that we can actually help unveil that unconsciousness through reconnecting with the sensations that arrive within us, because that's the language that our early childhood is trying to communicate with us through. It's not trying to keep us small. It's actually trying to help us heal. And when we can readapt our thoughts into like responding to what is arising as a form of healing intelligence rather than an obstacle or this thing that we have to get rid of. Um, it just changes our own conversation with ourselves and our own understanding of ourselves as like this whole other kind of being in a way and a whole different way of interacting with the world, with the people around us, with what's inside us with what's happening in the moment that's amazing i often in in coaching sessions people use the word transformative in just seven minutes or so of you talking you've changed the saboteur from a hurt me into a help me that is such a different way of thinking about the saboteur the imagery throughout recent human history is you put an angel on this side and you put a little devil with the pitchfork on the other shoulder yeah. <laughs> and that's the narrative that we've from fairy tales to stories to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the narrative and what you just did, you talked about the stressors, you talked about being triggered, you talked about all that being connected to the nervous system and the sensations we feel in the moment. And it's not that we should run for the exit when we feel them. In the healing intelligence, as you called it, in that moment, 
we should acknowledge that it was there to protect us maybe long ago. And that now um, we can change the story that we tell ourselves about it. That's exactly it. Wow. I'll just say wow. <laughs> because, yeah. and this is, I think this is why I I really wanted to talk to you because I think in, in our first conversation I had, my fascination in that moment was about the, we took a deeper dive into the nervous system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I had not had that conversation before. I, I think of the autonomic nervous system. That's exactly it. But that is it. Yeah. Right. It's anything automatic. So anything automatic, we have those automatic thoughts, those automatic rea- reactions. We have those automatic feelings that come in when we're close to certain people or when we hear certain things. And um, anything like anything automatic is very much connected to the nervous system. It is like the storage unit of all your experiences. And of course, it's connected to the brain, our limbic system, the lower limbic system. So our amygdala, our threat center, our memory center. A lot of times the memories don't even make it there. And all we're left is all these physical sensations from something that happened where we didn't even get to complete the cycle of activation, the fear that came in. And so it stays within the system. And anything that's similar that arises from then on triggers the cycle, the activation. But what that's really asking us to do is to stay with it long enough to help clear the activation so that the body can actually get the message that it's over, that's past, that's gone. It's like letting the air out of a balloon. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. And, And instead of it going pop, right? Because some people's awakening can, can really like floor them and really kind of shatter them. And where I come in is that, in some ways it was like that for me. And what really brought me to this work was like going, okay, there has got to be a better way of doing this. Where that no matter where people are, this does not have to shatter them even more. That they can see the shattered pieces and start picking them up And I start putting these puzzle pieces back together. But not to a point of where all these pieces are scattered so far away that it takes you years to start to to really collect it and put it back. And that's that's really (laughs) why my heart and soul is in this work. Because I know that pain. That pain of having that balloon just completely burst. It's like you think you have your, your life made out. You've already put your puzzle pieces in, right? And maybe you've yeah. squashed a few in along the way. Right? <laughs> but it's like literally somebody comes and like takes their hand and flips it. 